Gerard McClendon Live starts now. Yes, yes, Gerard McClendon Live starts right now. Blunt wraps, large cigarettes, small cigars, reefer paper, blunts, brown sugar, candy, cinnamon, you name it. First things first, I want to tell you right now that this isn't a real blunt wrap. This is just a paper towel, so I don't want anyone to get the wrong idea. Hey, if you go into any average convenience store, you can buy an interesting cigar or the wrapping paper for tobacco products in packaging that looks quite innocent. In fact, some wrapping advertising looks like candy. And what if you're buying the paper or the cigars for legitimate reasons with real tobacco? Should the convenience stores be banned from selling the paper products? Chicago, give me a call tonight and tell me what you think. Are Bishop Larry Trotter and his congregation at Sweet Holy Spirit, are they right for starting petitions against the slow burning brown paper to blunt or not to blunt? That is definitely the question for corn stores and gas stations. Give me a call 877-358-CLTV. Also, Camel cigarettes have always taken the heat for years with smooth character Joe Camel. You remember the guy. Over the last two years, though, they have been in the clear, but they have a questionable cigarette ad that has an interesting choice in artwork. Printed in Vogue magazine, Cosmo, and Glamour, the logo features a pink camel with a brand of cigarettes called Stiletto, targeting women Definitely, but targeting teenage girls, mm, that's kind of iffy. Call me about blunts and sexy cigarettes rolling down the street smoking Indo, sipping on gin and juice. Laid back. 877-358-CLTV. My opinion, blunts and cigars and smoke shops only. That's what I feel, not convenience stores. But is the problem the blunt or the marijuana? If you can't buy weed at the gas station, then the blunt purchase is irrelevant. As far as the cigarettes aimed at girls, teach your babies not to smoke the cancer sticks. I don't care if you put my favorite color on a box of 100s. I'm not inhaling the nonsense. Joining us now by phone, a professor of family and preventative medicine and director of the Cancer Prevention Control Program at Moore's Cancer Center, University of California, San Diego. Welcome, Dr. John Pierce. How are you this evening, Dr. Pierce? I'm good, thank you, Gerard. I appreciate you. I read the study today. There's articles all over that have printed information on your study. What does your study say, Dr. Pierce? Well, I want to go back to something you were saying as well. Mm -hmm. uh, earlier on in, in the 1990s, we demonstrated that um, the Joe Camel advertising in particular was very uh, good at undermining good parenting. Mm. And so parent, the, the parents who let their kids out on the street, that didn't matter. That Those kids started smoking irrespective of advertising. Right. But those parents who, who were uh, on top of their kids and were, were doing their best to be good parents, they're the ones whom the advertising appealed to. Mm. So it was undermining good parenting. And, it, and, and so we started this study actually to get at that. To, can, parents, can parents counter this advertising? Mm. Um, so so it, it's, not, it's not simple. The, what we found on this, we picked a thousand national a sample of a thousand teens and their families, and we enrolled them when they were 10 to 13 and followed them for five years. Mm. And everything was going on hunky-dory, about 10% of them um, uh, in, saying they had a favorite cigarette ad, which was either Marlboro or Camel, 10% mm -hmm. uh, each, until 2007, when all of a sudden the uh, the favorite ad for Camel just doubled among girls and only among girls, no change at all for Marlborough, um, and that was that, that, that was right on the at, the at the launching of Camel Number Nine. Yeah, now you know, okay, I'm looking at the study right now. 10 percent to 13 percent of the girls, and then 21.5 percent in the fifth year. You attribute this to this artwork, Dr. Pierce? Well, um, Rajay Reynolds queried me on that, and I said, well, tell me another campaign that you think uh, <laughs> you ran which uh, was significantly effective with the camels. Uh, I'm sure the tobacco control programs weren't advertising camels. Mm. You know, I'm looking at a comment here on Facebook right now, and it's really interesting, Dr. Pierce. I'm, hopefully I can get to it quickly. There is a young lady here who, she, she let her, her children look at the ad 
and they were enamored by this particular ad. Let me find it here. They love this ad. It says, I let my children look at this ad, Gerard, with the cigarettes, and it says, both of my teenage daughters looked at it. First thing they said at a glance was, quote, wow, it's so pretty. So it looks like you've got something that's de quite definitive here. And it, the, the girls responded very uh, dramatically to that ad. There's mm. no question. Now, do you think your sample size was large enough in this study, Dr. Pierce? There's no question it is. Um, it's highly significant, uh, the change. Uh, we're very careful on our statistics. So the 1,000 uh, a a thousand kids is a, a large sample. Mm. Let's talk about this artwork. Is the color scheme, the artwork, and a female camel supposedly is this enough to actually make a teenage girl say you know what i think i'm gonna try this thing that i know is bad for me uh well you you've got a couple of issues in there i know is bad for me uh most people think there's no harm in trying a little bit and um, um they don't think there'll be a smoker later on they have no idea how quickly they can become addicted hmm. uh to the product so so if it's cool and if it's, uh, you know, this is very lip balm as well and there all sorts of, uh, you know, paraphernalia that go with it. Hmm. Um, <laughs> so it's a, uh, if it's a cool thing and it's, um, it, it's, it's uh, moving in the group, in the social norm, yes, they'll, t they'll do it. You know what, Dr. Pierce, I'm going to read some more comments from Facebook. I posted your article uh, or your study as well as some articles on Facebook uh, Ravenal says looks like it to me Gerard it seems as if this ad is aimed at teenage girls uh, Tomikio says yep Chastity says I see it in the advertising Gerard Erica says I think for females maybe not teenage because I'm not sure if they know what quote light and luscious mean so are the words irrelevant here or is it the color scheme that's bringing in the teenage girls well, I'm not an expert on that. Uh, I've got to say from the beginning, um, you know, all I did was look to see whether they responded, and mm. they sure as heck did. Yes, yes. Well, we really appreciate you doing this study at the University of California. You know, it's interesting how advertising, the power of it, can manipulate the mind. And I mean, they're, even when it comes to color schemes, when it comes to the words that they choose, these companies, including R.J. Reynolds, they know exactly what they're doing, don't they, Dr. Pierce? It would seem they do. They, uh, they have significantly increased their market share recently. <laughs> yes, definitely. Dr. John Pierce, we appreciate you being on Gerard McClendon Live. Thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you. All right, have, have a, a good, good evening now. All right, you too. Smoke an endo in a big, fat, Blunt rap. What about cigarettes aimed at teenage girls? Come on. I'll add Gerard. Give me a call. 877-358-CLTV. Gerard McClendon Live. Back in two minutes.